Hello, hello, hallelujah. Glory to God, we'll get started this morning. Amen. So if you're out there in the highways and the byways, you can come on in and you can turn this mic up just a little, just a tad, and the music down just a tad. Thank you, Lord. And we will start in Ephesians chapter 1, beginning in verse 17. We'll pray these prayers out. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1, beginning in verse 17. I'm going to read it out of the New King James Version this morning. Lord, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for this time together, this time of prayer. We open up our hearts to you. We humble ourselves before you. You give grace unto the humble. You resist the proud. You give grace unto the humble, you said. So we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. We say, have your way. Holy Spirit, lead us and guide us. Holy Spirit, pray through us, we ask today. Let us get out of the way. Less of us and more of you. We thank you today that we are truly filled with that spirit of wisdom, revelation, knowledge, and understanding. We pray Ephesians chapter 1, beginning in verse 17. We pray and we ask that the Lord God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, we give unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, and that the eyes of our understanding would be enlightened, that we would know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality in power, in might, in dominion, in every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he's put all things under his feet and given him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Lord, today we thank you that you're filling us, your body. Hallelujah. Let's just start right there. Just thank him right now for filling you with his presence. We thank you, Lord, that you're filling us with your presence. You're filling me with wisdom, revelation, knowledge, and understanding. The power of the Holy Ghost. My body is the dwelling place. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Glory to God, for the Lord is good. Your mercies are everlasting. They are new each and every morning. They endure unto all generations. We thank you for the mercies of the Lord. We thank you for the grace of the Lord. We thank you for the ability of the Lord working in our lives. We thank you that we are truly filled with that spirit of wisdom, revelation, knowledge, and understanding. That we're not in confusion. We're not in darkness. We're not in fear. We're not in dismay or depression. But we are in a place of faith. For faith knows Faith hears, faith knows what God says, faith hears what you say, Lord, and therefore our faith comes alive. For faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of the Lord. We thank you for your word today. We thank you for revelation and understanding. Glory to God in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Why don't we just pray that out? Just say that with me. Just say, I'm not in confusion. I'm not in darkness. I'm not a child of darkness. I'm a child of the light. I'm a child of the kingdom of God. I'm a child of the kingdom of righteousness. I'm a child of the kingdom of understanding, in wisdom, in revelation, in strength, in mercy, in grace. Hallelujah. That's who I am. I'm a child of the king. I'm a child of of the Most High. I've been redeemed. I've been brought back. I've been bought back. I've been brought into a new covenant relationship by the blood of Jesus Christ, whereby I have boldness to enter into the very throne room of grace, whereby I might make my requests known unto you. And so today, Lord, in this time of prayer, we enter in by the blood of Jesus. We enter in by revelation and understanding 
We enter in not by pride and arrogance, but by humility, understanding who we are in Christ, understanding that it is only by the blood, understanding that it is only by the price that was paid. Hallelujah, by you, Jesus. For you are right now seated at the right hand of the Father, ever making intercession for us. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Now look at chapter 2. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 6. Look at that. We just read, we just read what Christ has done for us. We just read about who we are in Christ. Now look at chapter 2, verse 6. He says we're right there with him. Look at that. He's raised us up. Somebody say he's raised me up. He's raised us up. He's raised me up together and made me set, made us set together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's not future tense. That's right now. Come on. I'm in Christ and he's in me. Hallelujah. His victory is my victory. His victory is my victory. And even in the place of a trial in this fleshly realm, I am still victorious. Hallelujah. For death, hell, and the grave is wrapped up in the victory of Christ, and He holds the authority. He now holds the keys themselves to death and the grave itself. We thank You for newness of life. We thank You for the victory that is found in You, Jesus. And so this morning... We remind ourselves of these things. We pray these things out. And we say that we will be the ones who know exactly what to do, know exactly where to go, know exactly who to talk to as we're following the Holy Spirit. We will be those who are spirit-led and therefore be known as the children of the Most High. We're not going to be in confusion and darkness and worry and fear. But we will be led by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's say that together. I am led by the Spirit of God. I am led by the Spirit of God. I am led by the Spirit of God. He strengthens me. He fills me with faith. He fills me with His glory. He fills me with His power, His anointing, His grace. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. 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 Now look at chapter 3. Look at chapter 3 beginning in verse 14. And let's pray this out. Let's read this together. Chapter 3 of Ephesians verse 14. The King James Version says, Wherefore I desire... I'm sorry, that was verse 13. Verse 14, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant us, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit. Come on, everybody say, by his Spirit. By the Holy Spirit in our inner man. He strengthens us from the inside out. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You're strengthening us today. I feel his presence. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You're strengthening us. Come on, let's just pray that together right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I ask that you would strengthen me on the inside. I thank you that I am truly strong in the Lord and by the power of his might, his mighty power, his mighty power that dwells on the inside of me. I say that I am strong in the Lord. I'm strengthened in my inner man. Verse 17, that Christ may dwell in my heart by faith, that I, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge, that I might be filled with all the fullness of God. Hallelujah. All the fullness of God. We're filled with your presence. Filled with your fullness. Filled with your fullness. Lacking nothing. The Lord is our shepherd. We shall not lack. We shall not want for any good thing. You fill us with wisdom and understanding. You fill us with great hope and faith. You fill us with your grace and your mercy. You fill us with your strength and your power. <laughs> you fill us with your healing anointing. You're filling us. Filling us, filling us continually. 
Lord, we need you. Let us be empty vessels, less of us, but filled with you. Let us empty ourselves of ourselves. Fill us, we pray, this morning with your presence, your wisdom, your understanding. Now unto him, now unto you, Lord, that is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we ask or think according to and submitted unto the power that is at work in us, the power of the Holy Ghost unto you, Lord, be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. We thank you that you're working in us. Lord, we thank you this day for your church. We're thankful for the church of Jesus Christ all around this world. The many diverse parts, the many parts of your body, nations of the world, peoples of the world, different ethnicities, different economic statuses, different backgrounds, different languages, male and female, children, the elderly, your body, your body in all of its beauty. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, that this church desires and we desire. We're here in prayer to find ourselves in a place of unity with your will and your purpose. We want to be a part of that body that's not working against the head, but is working with the head. Let us be right there, lockstep, right there, marching in your will and your ways, a part of your body, not working against you, Lord, but working with you, working for you, allowing you to work through us. Lord, let us be your mouthpiece. Let us be your eyes, your ears, your hands, your feet. Let us be who you've called us to be. In the name of Jesus. And every distraction that this world has to offer. And all of the offense that the spirit of this world has to offer. Let us be those who recognize this. That we don't take the bait of Satan. We don't, we don't allow ourselves to get in that trap of offense. We're not offended just because somebody else is offended. We're not offended right now at the spirit of this world and their sinful nature. That's exactly who they are. But we're going to walk in love. We're going to swallow our pride. We're going to preach the gospel. We're going to speak the truth of your word with mighty grace and love. We're going to be wise as serpents and yet harmless as doves. We're going to watch your word and your presence and your spirit break barriers and strongholds in people's lives. We're going to watch you turn nations upside down. And I thank you, Lord, that you are working in the United States of America. Hallelujah. Why don't we just get up for a minute, maybe even walk around, or you can stay where you're at if you feel like you need to, and let's just pray for the United States of America today. I, I feel so strongly there's just some things in the spirit, I'm sure you feel it too, that are stirring some things in the, the spirit of this world in the realm of darkness, trying their best to get things moving in the direction of chaos and darkness. But we're going to pray for the peace of our nation. Hallelujah. The word says pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We're going to pray for the peace of our nation as well, the peace of our cities. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we just come before you right now as the body of Christ. And we're in unity. We are in agreement today by the Spirit of God that our prayers are effectual. The effectual, fervent prayers of the righteous make much power available. And so, Lord, we pray out of our hearts. We speak out of our mouths right now. For peace in the United States of America, peace in our cities, peace right here in Lubbock, Texas, the shalom, supernatural peace of the Lord, and that your gospel and your good news and your ways would be able to go forth, that the bondage-breaking power of the mighty Holy Ghost 
the anointing of the Lord, the bondage breaking power of your word would go forth. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let wisdom come. Let revelation, knowledge, and understanding come to your church. We pray for our nation. We pray for the churches of this nation that they would not just be social organizations, that they would not just be filled with political activism, that they would not be filled with dead, dry, humdrum nothingness, but they would be filled, that we would be filled, that Glad Tidings Church would be filled, hallelujah, with the power of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Woo! Your anointing and your presence that everywhere we go, your word is on our lips. People's lives changed. Families rearranged in the name of Jesus. Come on, everywhere we go, everywhere we go, everywhere we go. Everybody say, everywhere I go, wisdom follows me. Everywhere I go, the anointing of the Lord is with me. Everywhere I go, the word of the Lord is on my tongue. Hallelujah. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we just say that it's flowing out of us everywhere we go. Everything we do when we're on social media, everything we put out there. I thank you that it is not generating strife and division and dishonor and darkness. But we're drawing people to the cross. We're drawing people to the answer. We're drawing people to the light. We're drawing people to the truth. In the name of Jesus, we pray for the peace of our nation. We pray for the peace of our nation, which begins with true shalom peace in your body and in your church. For you are the answer, therefore your church is the answer. And everything else is just a band-aid. Everything else is just superficial. Everything else is just temporary. You are the answer for this nation. Your church is the answer for this nation. Let us rise up and take our place. Let us be bold. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us be bold. Let us be filled with your anointing. Let us be filled with your truth and your strength. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We believe you're working in this nation. Hallelujah. We believe you're working mightily in this nation. You're doing a work. You've got a plan it's beyond our ability to comprehend. You haven't fallen off the throne. You're using your people. You're using your body. Hallelujah. Lord, we pray for and we thank you for open doors of opportunity, open doors of utterance as the Apostle Paul prayed, open doors of utterance, open doors into people's hearts, open doors of opportunity in nations, in cities, in organizations. Open doors of opportunity in prison systems, in nursing homes, on college campuses, public school systems. Open doors of opportunity. Open doors. Hallelujah. Effectual, effectual, effectual open doors into people's hearts. In the name of Jesus. In the hospital systems in the medical establishment and community. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. 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 
Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I just think we need to just glorify the Lord for a few minutes here. Come on, in your own way, lift your voice. Let's just glorify Jesus. Jesus, we glorify you. We magnify you. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. There is truly none like you. There is none before you. There will be none after you. Hallelujah. There is none before you, and there will be none after you. You are great. You are greatly to be praised. You are magnificent. You are beyond description. You're marvelous. You're glorious. You're righteous. You're holy. You are creator, you are savior, you are redeemer, you are healer, you are wisdom, you are strength, you are power, you are provider, you are father, hallelujah. You are friend and you are brother, you are majesty, you are beyond our comprehension, yet at the same time you have come down to us in the form of your son, revealed yourself to us, and you have said, come unto me. You are the good shepherd. Hallelujah. You are our Father. We magnify you. We glorify you. We love you today. Thank you, Lord. And this is what I'm hearing so strong, and for those that may be watching online as well. I don't claim to know anything. I mean, I look at the news, see what's going on, just so I know what's going on. But, and this is not fear or worry or anything else, but I believe by the Spirit of God, the Lord is just saying in the days, weeks, months, and years to come, do not lose heart. Do not, do not lose heart. Somebody say, do not lose heart. Don't grow faint. Don't grow worried. Don't grow fearful. Don't let a spirit of fear come in in any form or fashion because that does not come from God for God hath not given us a spirit of fear come on but of power and of love and of a sound mind and it always amazes me as we preached a few weeks ago how many even Christians are going after something that God is not offering if he hadn't given us a spirit of fear why do people go after a spirit of fear that that don't make a bit of sense does it no no, we are to have the fear of the Lord in our lives. In other words, great honor, respect to the place of simple obedience. Amen? That's what it means to fear the Lord. People say, well, we shouldn't fear the Lord because he hadn't given us a spirit of fear. I'm not talking about a spirit of fear. I'm talking about the fear of the Lord. Those are two different things in your Bible. Amen? We taught on that a few weeks ago. So we don't have a spirit of fear. What can, what can be against me? If God be for me, who can be against me? If God be for me, who can be against us? God is for us. He has answers. He has understanding. And so we may see things that in the flesh could bring worry and fear. The spirit of this world. This world is trying its best to drum up fear, anxiety, Worry. Because listen, if a people are in a place of fear, they can be controlled. Let me say that again. If a people are in a place of fear, they can be controlled. That's exactly what the enemy has done year after year, century after century, throughout history and even in biblical history. You find the same old tactic. If he can get people in a place of fear, fear of, uh, of lack, fear of not understanding, fear of not feeling safe, fear, whatever it may be, then the enemy can bring in somebody, something, an organization, a governmental system, whatever it may be, that can then begin to control. Amen. So don't let fear come in. Amen. We are people of faith. We are people of faith. Say that when we say, I'm a person of faith. My faith is in Jesus Christ and in him alone. My faith is in his word. 
I'm a person of faith. I am not a person of fear. In fact, I, by being a person of faith in Christ Jesus, am called to break a spirit of fear in my life and in others' lives in the name of Jesus. When I walk in the room, the word of the Lord is on my tongue. When others are worried and filled with fear and gossiping about this and about that, we're going to speak the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Ira da 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 bo si, ira da 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 bo si, ira da da mo si. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Ita da 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 bo si, ira da 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 bo si. Iti ira da 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 bo si, ira da da mo si. Bo si ira da 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 bo si. Iti ira da mo si, ira da 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 mo si. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, the Spirit of God says that in the world's eyes and by the Spirit of the world, the doors will look closed. But the Spirit of God says they are open to my children. I will open doors that no man will close. I will close the doors that need to be closed for those that are intimately close. Hmm. The world will look at the doors as closed, but you will see them as open and you will walk through them. You will see what the world does not see. You will hear what the world does not hear. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God just simply says, just stay close to me. Just keep your spiritual ears open. Just spend time with me. I will show you, I will lead you, I will guide you. For I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound and peaceable mind. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, when I, when I think about what Paul told Timothy, those simple words, I think about the time period and, and what the church was facing at that time in a physical way. And they were under an immense amount of persecution. Persecution that we do not understand in America. An immense amount. And that was most likely, most theologians agreed, during the time of Nero's reign. I mean, you think of horrendously dark, horrible, evil rulers in history. You think of Nero, you think of Hitler, maybe a couple others, but he's right in there. <laughs> and his persecution of the church was merciless, crucifying by the thousands and throwing them to the lions in the Colosseums. That stuff really happened. And yet Paul said, listen, Timothy, listen, Timothy. Remember, God hath not given you a spirit of fear. Remember, God has not given the church a spirit of fear. But no, instead, he's given us the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is a spirit. He is the spirit of God. He is the spirit of God. Hallelujah. In the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in our mortal beings. Our bodies are the temples of the Holy Ghost. 
And that Holy Ghost is a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and a spirit of a sound mind able to make right judgments, right decisions when the time comes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Amplified Bible says it that way, a spirit of a sound mind. It speaks of the ability by the Holy Ghost to make sound, right decisions. Amen. Hallelujah. And all of us have been there before, and we're all going to be there again at different times in our life where we have to make decisions. Do I go to the right? Do I go to the left? Which way do I go? What do I do? What do I say? Who do I turn to? What does tomorrow look like? We've all been there and we will all be there again at different points in our lives. And remember, Paul told Timothy, when you're at those places, don't get in a place of fear. Amen? Listen, when you have understanding of a situation, how many of you know when you know where to go and you know what to do, fear can't come in? Amen. Hallelujah. Any of you, probably not if you grew up here in Lubbock, but when I was a kid, there's a couple times I was out in the woods and got lost. I know we don't have those here in Lubbock, but, you know. <laughs> you got what? The corn maze. <laughs> uh, you just keep walking. You'll get out of there. But, <laughs> but <laughs> there's a couple times where I grew up, there was some pretty good sized woods out behind my house are not there anymore it's all changed they put a freeway through there and everything else you know but um so I'd spend a lot of time out there in the woods and a couple times when I was little I remember feeling lost I was out there by myself and you know that feeling if you've ever been there like worry come on fear it tries to come up doesn't it what what gets rid of that worry and fear oh there's home oh there's the way boom fear is just gone right Come on. And that's exactly what happens in our lives. We don't know which way to go. What am I going to do? This is coming against me. This is what the enemy's putting pressure on me with. What do I do? The spirit of fear tries to grab a hold of you. And that spirit of fear, it'll, it'll put knots in your stomach. Come on. It, 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 it'll make you shut down. Hmm. But when you know where to go, when you see the light at the end of the tunnel, when you feel like, oh, I've got an answer, it doesn't mean you're setting in the middle of the answer, but you've got the answer. You've got the word of the Lord. You know what to do. You know which way to turn. That fear can't touch you. Come, how many of you know what I'm talking about? Because you got a vision now. you got a purpose. You're moving. Hallelujah. That's why... We talk about vision around here a lot. you got to have vision and purpose and destiny in your life. Without a vision, the people perish. They cast off for all restraint. They run wild. Amen. But that's not you and that's not I. And that's not this church in the name of Jesus. That's not the body of Christ. For we proclaim this day that the body of Christ in the United States of America has the vision of the Lord, has the word of the Lord, has the purpose of the Lord. Hallelujah. No matter what we're facing, no matter what we're seeing, we're not going to be caught in a spirit of fear. Glory. But we are going to be filled with a spirit of faith. We say Glad Tidings Church is filled with a spirit of faith. We say Glad Tidings Church is moving forward. We say that the membership of this church is moving forward in their lives, at their household, with their children, or with their spouses, their marriages, their grandchildren, whatever the situation may be. We say that the membership of Glad Tidings Church is moving forward on the job, moving forward with dreams and vision, moving forward with the things and the plans and the purpose that God has destined for their lives, moving forward in areas of ministry, moving forward by the grace of God. We say that the favor of the Lord is upon us and the favor of the Lord is upon each and every member, each and every family, each and every child, each and every grandchild, each and every adult. Lord, the favor, the favor, the favor, the favor of the Lord, your favor, Lord. I pray according to your word that it would truly surround us as a shield. 
that the tactics of the enemy, that the fiery darts of the enemy, that the spirit of this world and all of its lies would not be able to penetrate, not be able to touch our hearts. <laughs> Woo! The favor of the Lord, we say, surrounds us as a shield. And that favor, that favor opens up doors of opportunity I just keep hearing that. That favor opens up doors of opportunity that no man can shut. And we just say that even for Glad Tidings Church, doors of favor, doors of opportunity are being opened up. We proclaim in the name of Jesus 2022, we're going higher, we're going higher, we're going higher. I don't care what the spirit of this world may be doing. They may be going lower. They may be getting into darkness, but we say we are are going higher in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Going higher. Going higher. Come on, proclaim that over your life right now. I'm going higher. I'm going higher. I'm going higher. I don't quit. I don't give up. I don't back down. Glory, 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 glory. Ha ha Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. No, we're not backing up. We're not quitting. We're not going to be detoured. We're filled with wisdom, opportunity, the favor of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Look at the book of Revelation. Let me point something out to you. Spirit of God, I was reading through Revelation years ago. And uh, just felt like he showed me this. Revelation uh Chapter 3, and um, chapter 3, verse 7. So there's seven churches. You know these two chapters here in Revelation. Jesus speaks to each one of them. In five of the seven, he corrects them in different ways. He says, you need to get this right. You need to repent. Two of them, he, he has no, no words of condemnation. One of them is the church of Philadelphia, verse 7. He says, and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write this. And you may have a modern translation that actually says pastor, and it can be literally translated in that way. In other words, the, the leadership of these churches, these seven churches were literal churches in Asia Minor. You can still go there today and see where these cities were. As far as I understand, it's been years ago since I studied this out, but really none of them are what we would call working cities in the same area today. And um, most of them are in the area of Turkey, which at one point was majority Christian in the first few centuries after the church age. And now I think they're down to like less than half a percent of the population is, is Christian. Isn't that interesting? And uh, so this church in the area of the city of Philadelphia, he says, write this, these things saith he that is holy, he that is true, and he that hath the key of David. Now, of course, the key of David, the authority of David, Jesus Christ is going to eternally set literally on the throne of David. I just take the Bible for what it says, right? And uh, whether that's an allegory or not or what that's going to look like, we're going to find out one day. But Jesus Christ is going to reign eternally. Amen. Hallelujah. Over a physical, literal kingdom. And there's going to be a thousand-year rule and reign of Christ before a new heaven and earth, by the way. Jesus is going to physically return. I'm a millennialist. I believe in the millennial reign of Christ. It's going to be physical. It's going to be literal. He's going to rule and reign with a rod of iron on this earthly realm. And then at the end of that, it's, the Bible says in Revelation that Satan will be loosed for a season, a short season. And he's going to be able to deceive many by the millions. 
and they'll come against God, and God ain't going to put up with it, and he's just going to consume them with the breath of fire. <laughs> They're just gone. Isn't that something? And then Revelation speaks of, Peter speaks of, then a new heaven and a new earth. The earth consumed with fire, made new. The elements melted away with a fervent heat there in the Greek, just gone, dissipated, not washed away, just gone, never to be seen or heard from again. And a new earth created in beauty, holiness, eternity. Amen. So really the Bible doesn't teach that we're going to be hanging out on clouds of glory, strumming harps, doing nothing for all of eternity. That might sound good in the movies, but it's not what the Bible teaches. It doesn't really tell us too much about eternity, but it's going to be beautiful. Amen. We're going to rule and reign with him. Hallelujah. And in my own little pea brain's ability to comprehend, as we saw Sunday, there's also a great big universe out there. Who knows what we're going to be doing? Maybe moving at the speed of thought. <laughs> Hallelujah. But anyway, he writes here to the church of Philadelphia, and he says, I'm the one who has the key of David. Now, this term, key of David, it's only found in your Bible one other place. It's in the Old Testament, and it speaks of the key of David. And the key of David, the key that David possessed, more than just the kingship and the authority, the reason why he possessed it was because he had a heart for the Lord, and he spent time in worship before the Lord. They're connected. Everybody say they're connected. Hallelujah. So the one who has the key of David, the one who opens, the one who shuts, the one who shuts and no man opens. So this is where we get that terminology. The Lord can open a door, no man can shut. He can shut a door, no man can open. But what's the key? How do you get in and out of a door? you got to have a key if it's locked, right? And whenever you connect those two, it seems to show us that that key has everything to do with intimacy, Everything to do with knowledge and understanding, everything to do with worship, everything to do with an understanding of his character, and just being before him, spending time with him. In this church of Philadelphia, notice he has no con a condemnation toward them. He, 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 he says, hey, listen, man, this one, Jesus, the one who's true, the one who has the key of David, the one who can open, the one who can shut, the one who can make a way. He's speaking, verse 8, I know thy works. So in other words, your works matter, don't they? I know that's a popular teaching right now. Your works don't matter. It doesn't matter the way you live your life. It doesn't matter what you do. If you start hearing somebody preach that, God bless them, pray for them, but quit listening to them. They don't understand the basics of their own Bible. Your works do matter. Your works don't save you, but the saved will have good works. That's called Paul's paradox. He said, your works don't save you, right? But the saved will have good works. Amen? And Jesus said, I know your works. I've been watching. I've been watching the way you live your life. He said, behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man will be able to shut it. So here it is, that terminology. He said, this open door that I'm setting before you. Notice he says, I know your works. I know your intimacy. I know your obedience. I, I know who you are, and I've set before you an open door. When a door is open, you don't have to open it. When a door is open, you're just going through it. And that back door, it's open right now. Anybody's free anytime you want to. You can walk right through that door. You don't even have to open it. <laughs> right? And then you can walk right back on through too. And right here, Jesus says, I know your works. I've set before you an open door, an open door that no man can shut because I know you have a little strength. He said, I know you've been through some stuff. I know you've faced some trials. I know you've had some trouble. I know your strength in the flesh May not be all that great, but he said, you don't really need a lot of strength in the flesh because I am the one who has set a door before you that I've already opened, and all you've got to do is just walk through by faith. Isn't that a beautiful picture? Amen. 
And he said, no man will be able to shut it. In other words, when God has opened something, nobody, no leader, no nation is able to shut it. That's beautiful. Amen. For you have a little strength, but you've kept my word, and you've not denied my name. You haven't compromised. You haven't given up. You haven't quit. Verse 9, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews, and they're not, but they're liars. Behold, I will make them come and worship before your feet, and to know that I have loved you. Now, I've got some personal opinions on what that could mean. There's no reason to get into that right now. I always thought verse 9 is kind of interesting. But look at verse 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. Some translations say great tribulation, which shall come upon all of the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. This is one of the verses and one of the main reasons, really, why I do believe in a pre-tribulation rapture of the church that loves Jesus. I didn't say everybody that attends church. Come on. I didn't say everybody that signed a church roll. But notice, notice verse 7. Notice this church, this church of Philadelphia, this church that Jesus speaks to them of intimacy, that, that Jesus speaks to them of an open door that nobody can shut. But who opened it? Jesus opened it. And then he says, listen, I, I'm going to keep you. I'm going to keep you from the hour of tribulation, from the hour of temptation. And, of course, different ones have different opinions. But in, in my opinion, I think it's pretty clear that this is speaking of this great tribulation period that Jesus is about to show John throughout the rest of the book of Revelation, the things still to come. So chapter 2, chapter 3 are the things that are. He's speaking to the church age. That's not just them 2,000 years ago, but that's you and I today. We are the church today. And then he steps into the things that are to come. Speaking to the church age in general. Amen. And as I read through these seven churches, yes, they were physical churches. Yes, he was speaking to them at that time. But I believe also he is speaking to us today. And the question is, well, which one am I? That's up to you and I. That's up to me. Which one do I fit in? And myself personally, ever since the Lord showed me this years ago, I've always said, I won't be in that church. Right there. The church of Philadelphia. The church that obeys his word. The church that doesn't deny his name. The church that doesn't compromise. The church that knows him. The church that has open doors set before them that no man can shut. And they can walk right on through because they have intimacy with the Lord. In the church that the Bible says the Lord will keep them from. It doesn't say he'll keep them through. It says he'll keep them from that hour of great tribulation, temptation that will come upon the entire world. Now again, some argue with that and that's fine. We'll get along. I love you. But that's how I see it. Amen. Now, Notice what he says, verse 11. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. He said, just hold on. Don't quit. Don't give in to deception. Stay intimate. Stay in his word. Stay in the truth. Amen. Hallelujah. We're living in a culture as never before. No other time in the history of the world have people of all ages been bombarded with so much information. Hmm? So much information that ultimately you really don't know what's true or what's not or what to believe or what not to believe. Amen. And everybody shares stuff instantly. Listen, you can now through CGI make videos. I don't know if you understand this or know this, but there's a lot of stuff going around right now, and it's only going to get worse, that are absolutely, completely unreal. And you look at it, oh, it's a real, and it's not even a real person. Huh. It's amazing. 
Amazing. So I just want, this is just maybe off in right field right now, but don't believe everything you even see on the Internet. Don't believe everything you even see on your social media or on Facebook or this one. I don't care if your best friend just shared it. I'm, I'm serious. Because it's only going to get worse. Deception, manipulation. There was a video that was going around and um, family members shared it. It was beautiful, well, very well-meaning. But I watched it and I said, something don't look right about that. And it's this video of this woman over in Africa at a meeting that they're having outside, a large outdoor meeting. And there's thousands of people there. And, like, her arm is all broken and all up in here. And it's, like, all dislocated. And it's very obvious. And they're praying, but there's something that doesn't feel right about the prayer. I don't know if you've seen this or not. It goes around every once in a while. The first time I saw it, I said, huh? And it looks like a mighty healing miracle. And she's, oh, and everybody's jumping and shouting and praying. And, 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 all of, and the arm comes back into place. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, I just did a little Google on it. And you find the same woman with the same problem at four other meetings. They pay her. She has a broken arm. The top of her arm, her femur, whatever, right, right in this area, is literally broken in half. It was never repaired properly. And she can dislocate it and push that arm that where the bone actually sticks out. And then she can work it back into place. And it looks like such a miracle. And they pay this woman to come and get the crowds all worked up at these meetings. And we're over here in America. Woo! Hallelujah! Is God a healer? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. But not everything you see on the Internet, not everything somebody says, not every conspiracy theory out there, come on. Be led by the Spirit of God. Be led by the Spirit of God. And I feel this so strongly. Let's be like that church of Philadelphia. We're intimate with the Lord. We're spending more time in His Word than anything else. We're reading His Word. We're hearing from the Spirit of God. We're led by the Spirit of God. We have a spirit of discernment about us. That's one of the nine gifts of the Spirit. It doesn't say the gift of discernment. It says what? A spirit, I mean, sorry, the, the discerning of spirits. Said that backwards, it matters. The discerning of spirits. In other words, you discern what spirit that thing is of. What spirit is behind that person? What spirit is behind what's being said? Right? Kind of like the slave girl that was following Paul. And she was proclaiming truth. These men are of God and they're proclaiming salvation. Hear them. What she was saying was true, but she was saying it from a demonic entity that possessed her. And she actually followed, said, said Paul, follow Paul for several days. He finally had enough, turned around, cast the devil out of her. Make a long story short, the church of Philippi was founded because of that event. Isn't that something? Hallelujah. Not everything that glistens, not everything that proclaims the word of God is of God. Have the discerning of spirits operating in your life. And you do because the Holy Ghost dwells within you. Stay humble before him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to the Spirit of God, and He will lead you in right directions. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in the earth. I thank you for the spirit of revival that I believe we see all around the world, right here in the United States of America. I thank you for mighty moves of your presence. And I thank you for what you're doing right here at Glad Tidings Church. Lord, you are our healer. You are a miracle worker. You are our Savior. So, Lord, we look to you, but at the same time, we will be those who, by the Spirit of God, will discern the times that there is an evil presence behind something. 
will discern when there is deception behind something. Hallelujah. That we will not be those who walk by the flesh, but we will be those who walk by the Spirit. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 We're going higher. Thank you, Lord. This church is going higher. Thank you, Lord. The people of this church are going higher. Thank you, Lord. The marriages of this church are going higher. Thank you, Lord. The children and the young people of this church are going higher. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Those that are seasoned in your word and the elderly, they're going higher. We're going higher in every area. We're going higher in the area of our finances. We're going higher in the area of favor. We're going higher in the area of revelation and understanding. We're going... <coughs> We're going higher in the area of the moving of your presence and your gifts. Glory to God, not only in our services, but on the workplace and on the street corner. We're going higher in the name of Jesus. We call in souls right now from the north, the south, the east, and the west, even to this very place, to these altars, to this church house. Let the lost be saved. Let them be discipled. Let them grow up in the things of God. Hallelujah. We say that we're going higher in every area of our lives, and this church is moving up, moving up, moving up, going higher, going higher in the name of Jesus. So we will be patient. We will be patient. We will not back up, and we will not quit. Hallelujah. And we will let patience have its perfect work. Therefore, wanting nothing, being perfect, entirely filled in everything that we set our hands to, James said. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Patience is going to have its perfect work. Glory. Glory. And somebody needs to hear this. If you're going to have patience, you can't compare yourself with anybody else. Not on the job. Not in your family. Not in any area of life. You see where you're at, and you just simply ask the Lord, Lord, where do you want me to go? I may have made some mistakes yesterday, but what do you want tomorrow to look like? I want to obey you. <laughs> Glory. Faith says, Lord, which direction do you want me to go today? I learned from my yesterday, but I'm living in today. I will obey you today. I will look with vision and purpose toward tomorrow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray for uh, Kent and Debbie. They're not feeling well today, uh, specifically, and there may be others that are not uh, feeling well, and perhaps even yourself. If you want my wife and I to pray for you, we'll lay hands on you right now, but is there somebody else you want me to just write their name? Let's call out some names right now. Can we do that? Anybody else, somebody specifically you want us to pray together for? Yes, sir. Robin? All right. Jonah, yeah. So Jonah had uh, kidney surgery. Most of you know Samantha and McDeal. Uh, if you attend the church here, little baby Jonah. So is he He's a, a year old now, huh? A year and a half, yeah. And he uh, had some kidney surgery, but he's doing good. Pray for Jonah. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Jason, your son? Yeah. Well, yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. Pray for Heather. Why don't you come sit right up here? My wife will help pray for you too. Anybody else? Okay. I'm going to let's pray for these three and then let's uh, some of the ladies gather around. Sister Heather, she's such a blessing and she's joined up with the church here and been a part of it now for a couple of months and she just jumps right in and helps and works in so many ways and so thankful for Heather. So let's pray 
for Heather. Let's call out uh, these names here together. Can we do that? Hallelujah. Why don't you just stand up and let's just agree together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. By the stripes of Jesus Christ, your word says that we are the healed of the Lord. So we take you at your word right now and we call out these names, Kent and Debbie. We plead the blood of Jesus over them right now. In the name of Jesus, I come against any form of sickness that would try to attack their bodies in any way. And we say that they are healed. We say that they are healthy. We say that they are strong. Glory to God in the name of Jesus. And we pray for Robin right now. We call her healed and healthy and strong by the stripes of Jesus Christ. We say that she is truly the healed of the Lord. Healing is the children's bread. Hallelujah. And for little Jonah, for the, re for the continued uh, restoration and recovery in his body, we call his kidneys healthy and healed, operating properly all of the days of his life until the day he goes into eternity. We say that those kidneys are going to operate properly. We call them healthy. We call them strong in the name of Jesus. We thank you that he is growing and maturing in the ways of the Lord. We call him a strong man of God that will serve you with all of his heart in the name of Jesus. And we pray for Jason. We thank you for continued healing and restoration. We rebuke that spirit of cancer and we say that you will not have your way in his body, but he is strong. He is healthy. He is healed. We thank you that he is a child of God and that you are his miracle worker right now in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for the good work that you have begun in Heather Hallelujah, that you're faithful and you're just and you're able to perform it even until the day of your coming in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Total freedom, total liberty, total healing, total restoration in her life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And the vision and the purpose of the Lord coming forth as she serves you with all of her heart. And I rebuke every lie of the enemy. I rebuke every tormenting lie, even from the past, in the name of Jesus. And I say that you will not have your way in her life. But she's a child of the Most High. And she's walking in the ways of the Lord. And she's walking in the faith our Lord Jesus Christ and the devil has no hold in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus hallelujah thank you Lord thank you Lord now Lord we just pray for a Sunday's outreach to the homeless we thank you for wisdom and understanding and everything we set our hands to and as we uh, prepare those meals here in a few days they will be a blessing in a very a substantial and practical way to all those who receive them. And we just pray for your anointing, <laughs> your anointing and your presence that flows through in a very tangible way, in a very loving way, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. For those that are perhaps at the place in their life where they have given in to hopelessness, where they've given in to just, this is just the way it's going to be. I pray that vision and purpose and destiny and dreams would rise up in their heart. Hallelujah. That they would give their heart wholeheartedly to you. And that you lift them and you strengthen them. You give them purpose. And you set them in direction for their life. In the name of Jesus. We thank you that you're going to do a mighty work Sunday evening and through those simple meals as we just pass them out, that the love of the Lord would shine forth. In the name of Jesus. We pray for Freedom in Jesus Ministries as they, here in a couple of weeks, work towards those Christmas packages for the prisoners. We thank you that every need is met. Every dollar that needs to come in is coming in, even supernaturally in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, that each and every inmate, as they receive those gifts, 
that they will feel the supernatural overflowing love of the Lord. Hallelujah. That your anointing will be upon every piece of soap. <laughs> that your anointing will be upon the socks. That your anointing will be upon everything that's given out. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bondages would be broken in the name of Jesus. The past would be healed and that men and women would give their hearts, surrender their hearts, their lives to Jesus, allow you to heal and restore. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Now, my wife may have something here, but I, uh, this is completely switching gears. <laughs> put, it in, put it in park and go a different direction here. Um, I, I have a few more of these copies, and a couple of people asked me Sunday, and I realized I didn't have any more back there, so I guess people have been picking them up. But from First Liberty, the religious protection sample for refusing vaccine mandates with your employer. And uh, you can go on their website, firstliberty.org. I've also got a phone number here if you want to call and perhaps get some help. I, from what I understand, they're, they may even be a little bit overwhelmed right now because, of course, these deadlines are hitting all over the country. And even right here in Lubbock, there are people in this church right now, uh, regardless of the governor's executive order, there are companies, there are hospitals, there are others that are saying this is what we're doing. You know, you can't tell us not to do this, and they're telling their employees, you got to be vaccinated or you're gone next month. And so um, I know, um, according to some church members, that we had to, we're filling out some things for them. I know that um, uh, UMC is allowing for, which constitutionally I believe they need to and have to, allowing for religious exemptions. And I don't know if Covenant is, and there's some other companies around here that we're, some of the church members are dealing with <clears throat> on this issue. So again, I believe constitutionally, Christianity and everything else aside right now, but constitutionally, as an American citizen, we should have the right to choose whether we want to have a vaccine injected into our body or not. And it just amazes me how the very people who scream, my body, my choice, all of a sudden, it's backwards now. Isn't that amazing? My body, my choice. Unless it's a vaccine or something that we want you to put in your body, now it's no longer your choice. Interesting. And so I've got these samples back there if you want to take one. And uh, basically it just says, listen, don't, you know, copy it exactly. Don't make it cookie cutter. Make it in your own words. So it comes from your heart, but there's an example of how it can how it can look, um, to you know to show that this is your religious belief and that you don't want to have any part in this. Now there are others in the church that they've chosen uh, to get this vaccine, and that's it's up to them. I'm not mad at them. I'm not going to tell anybody what they can do or have to do. I am not a controlling individual. I'm going to speak the truth. And as for me and my house and. My own personal conviction and what we've researched, we're not interested in doing it. Amen? If somebody has or somebody does, I'm not mad at you, and I don't think you have any less faith than anybody else. Amen? Hallelujah. But for those that want to stand, I'm going to stand there with you. And uh, here's one way you can do it on a practical way and just stand to your employer and say, hey, listen, I've been a good employee, and you need me here. <laughs> but if it's a choice between me being here and being a good employee and me getting a, you know, a, 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 sti a needle stuck in my arm in this vaccine, I, I'm not going to do that. And I should have that right to refuse that as an American citizen. Amen. And so you print this out, type this out, give it to them, sign it, and uh, see where that goes. Uh, I did see on the news just the other day. Yes, sir. Yeah, well, hallelujah, arm me up. I, um, I, I've said this, and I don't just say this because 
I saw somebody's Facebook post. I really believe I feel it by the Spirit of God that there's some interesting times coming in the next few months. I'm not proclaiming to say what that's going to be. I don't, I don't believe we're going to be in a civil war, this and that, but in many ways we are already in one. People say, well, the U.S. has never been this divided. I don't agree with that. You study history. There's a little thing called the Civil War. We were just a little bit divided. <laughs> you know, my, yeah, my grandfather's grandfather, he fought for the Union Army. And, uh, you know, sometimes we think, well, that's so long ago. That's my grandpa's grandpa. It's not really that far removed. So we forget things kind of quickly sometimes. And uh, our nation was obviously completely divided. Uh, I saw this on the news. I thought it was interesting that Austria, not Australia, but Austria, has now become the first country to officially lock down the unvaccinated. If you're unvaccinated uh, and you have not, I think they said, had a positive test of coronavirus in the last two months, in other words, something like that. I don't know where they come up with that part. So in other words, if you just had it, they think, well, you must have some antibodies, so I guess you're okay. But if you're not vaccinated and you haven't had coronavirus in the last two months, something like that, then you have to stay in your house now. Everybody else can live their lives except for you. Now, I'm not saying that's coming to the U.S. I don't know. That's Austria. And they've had a history of interesting issues <laughs> as a nation. Um, but it's interesting. And that's a nation. That's Austria. That's a nation that Hitler walked right in. That was only 80 years ago. Just walked right in and took it over without a shot fired. Hmm. And they were so excited and happy to be out from under that rule. And yet, look at that. To me, that's crazy. That's not a, hey, let's all be safe and stay home for two weeks. That's a, you're unvaccinated. So basically, this is the way, from what I understand, it reads that from now till eternity, you just got to stay home. You can no longer live a life in Austria if you're unvaccinated. Now, does that sound a little familiar with something that may be coming to the world one day? Can't buy and sell without being a part of this organization, without taking this mark. Interesting. Hallelujah. Well, I love you. God is good. you have anything you want to add and pray for? I'll give you five minutes. <laughs> 